What is going on, Laker fans? This is Lakers Talk Daily. I'm Alan Sliwa. Monday through Friday, we're throwing up Laker content on the page. So appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Try to find something uh, on a day-to-day -day basis that we think our Laker fans would want to uh, hear about, talk about, comment on, and let's just say through the first three games of the season. Not very hard to find some topics around Lakers basketball. So uh, today's topic that I want to get into is the final two minutes of the Lakers and the Blazers yesterday at Crypto.com. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. ESPN LA is our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Um, we'll continue to put uh, more content up. Also got all our shows. We're live streaming and everything else. So uh, certainly if you're a fan of 710, um, you'll want to be a part of this channel. Final two minutes yesterday for the Lakers and the Portland Trail Blazers. I got a few things that I want to get into because... Lakers were obviously in a great position to win that game yesterday, should have won the game yesterday, and found a way to lose that game yesterday. And there's some decisions that um, don't really make sense to me on how the Lakers lost that game. So let's let's take you to um, let's take you to when Russ checked into the game towards uh, uh, about 4:45 mark, somewhere around there. Um, LeBron hit a layup. Got an and one, then Russell Westbrook checks in with four minutes and 40 seconds left. Checks in for Troy Brown Jr. Lakers go up by eight. They're up 98 to 90, and then Russ comes in under five minutes left to go. Not really sure what the game plan was of having Russ back in. And this one's actually more geared towards Darvin Ham and the coaching staff of what is what do you think you're going to get out of Russell Westbrook in those final few minutes that you don't think you were getting from some of your other players, some of your other wings out there. Specifically, let me use Troy Brown Jr. as an example. Um, so let me walk through kind of some of that that criteria there. Russ had been, Russ did not come in, um, start of the fourth quarter up into this point. So now Russ had been sitting for over seven minutes. He'd been sitting. Actual action on the court, he had been sitting. And the Lakers... They had a great third quarter. They outscored Portland by 12. They were in a really, really good position to win this game and grab their first W of the season, which is obviously, look, you go look at that schedule. It's not easy to grab Ws in the beginning part of the Lakers' schedule. They already started out the season 0-2, so you figure that they're in a position to beat the Portland Trail Blazers. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Russ comes in with under five minutes left to go. And this is not just all on Russ, by the way, but I'm going to kind of walk through what I noticed uh, specifically for the Lakers. With a buck 56 left, Lakers take a seven point lead. They're up 102 to 95. All right, 102 to 95. From that point on, with a seven point lead and under two minutes left to go, you need about five or six things to go wrong if you're the Lakers to end up losing that game. If you're the Portland Trail Blazers, you basically got to score on every possession, and you got to hope the Lakers take bad shots, shots that don't make sense, sometimes shots early in the shot clock. You need a lot of things to go right for the Blazers to walk away with a win and then run their record to 3-0. It's exactly what happened. After Braun hits, um, after Braun hits a shot, the Lakers go up, like I mentioned, by 7. They're up 102 to 95. He gets that layup. Dame gets fouled. They're only up 5 now. Then the Lakers decide to run the shot clock, not really run any set plays or anything like that. They're, they kind of go into the, it's, it's the equivalent of a prevent defense in football, where you're just trying to run the clock out rather than just play football and get the lead that you have the lead based on what you've done in the past. Keep it up, and then the, t the clock will just run itself out. Lakers weren't doing that. They're trying to run the clock. Pat Bev ends up taking a 25-foot jumper. If you're the Blazers, great. Pat Bev's going to take a three. Awesome. Portland comes back. Nurkic hits a shot. Now it's a three-point game, 102-99. to 99. Um, Then LeBron, same thing. They run clock. Run clock, and then he takes a 26-footer at the end of the shot clock. And again, if you're the Blazers, you know that, okay, if he hits that shot, it's ball game. But the Lakers are trying to play hero ball, trying to run the clock rather than just play basketball. You got yourself a seven, eight-point lead by playing good basketball, by playing great defense, by moving the ball around, by getting other guys involved. Why all of a sudden do you stop doing that in the final two minutes? Okay, after Braun misses the shot, um, Anthony Simons hits a tough shot over Anthony Davis. It's now a one-point game, and there's about 30 sec 36 seconds left on the clock. Let me, let me throw it now over to the next possession and what the Lakers you know, do in those final two minutes. 
Patrick Beverly takes a bad shot. Braun takes a bad shot. And then 36 seconds left, Anthony Simons makes um, a four-foot jumper over Anthony Davis. Tough shot off the glass. 36 seconds left on the clock. Russ is bringing the ball past half court. And for some odd reason, Russ decides with 27 seconds left on the clock, I'm going to pull up and take an 18-footer. Russ, Lakers have a one-point lead. Why are you pulling up and taking an, an 18-footer or whatever, whatever distance it was? Um, I don't know if you guys watched the, Bla the Blazers play defense on Russ in the final couple of minutes of game yesterday. Nurkic is standing 15 feet away from him, baiting him, please take the shot. We want you to take that shot. Um, you, you saw this with Zubats on, uh, on uh, Thursday night against the Clippers. He kind of was doing the same thing. They're using their centers to guard Russ. They're basically saying, we're going to keep our centers in the paint or around the paint. You want to take a jumper, feel free to take a jumper. They're baiting Russ to take it. Russ takes the shot. Makes no sense why he takes the shot. There's still 15, 16, 17 seconds left on the shot clock. Again, you need six, seven things to go wrong, and the Lakers did everything wrong in those final couple of minutes. Russ misses the shot. Dame comes back, hits a 27-footer. They go up two. Braun ties it up. Jeremy Grant hits the final shot. Lakers lose 106-104. Braun misses a, a fadeaway, a tough shot there at the end. Lakers lose by two. Here's my question that this is not geared towards Russ. This is actually geared towards Darvin Ham. Why is Russ in the game in those final couple of minutes? It didn't make sense to have him in in the final couple of minutes. He made his justification of why he wanted another defensive wing out there, which is why he did it. But the way defenses are playing Russ, the way they're playing him right now, uh, I, I, you just can't have him in a, in a game like that. And again, this isn't just on Russ because Russ took one bad shot. Well, Patrick Beverly took a bad shot. Braun took a bad shot. I don't understand why Russ was taking his shot. Anthony Davis was still at half court. Braun was just coming up the floor as well. It was obviously a terrible shot. It's not the shot that the Lakers needed in that situation. They had everything go wrong at the end, and the Lakers end up losing the game 106-104. to 104. So, so I go back to this, and I just mention this because um, I'd hate, I'd hate Darvin Ham to feel pressure that I have to play Russ because it's Russell Westbrook. No, 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 no. Do what you've been saying since you took over the team. You're going to do what's in the best interest of the team. He should feel no pressure to put Russ in at any point in that fourth quarter if he didn't feel like, um, you know, Russ should be in there. And certainly the way the Blazers were playing the Lakers, I don't think that was the, the way the Blazers were playing Russ, I don't think it was a smart move. I know it's easy to look at it now. Um, but those final two minutes, you know, we're going to look at those final two minutes. Lakers should be one and two right now. They're not, they're 0 and three, and they got a couple really, really tough games coming up. So, um, you give me your thoughts here, comments below. What do you think of the final two minutes, the way the Lakers played those final two minutes, Darvin Ham's decision to have Russ in, in the final, um, couple of minutes, uh, Russ's decision to take that shot with 27 seconds left. I didn't understand that at all. Uh, your comments below, we'd greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me, Lakers Talk with Alan Slew on YouTube. Uh, subscribe there. And I'll be back tonight. Uh, have Lakers Talk, 7 p.m. Uh, please tune in for that as well. Uh, Lake fans, have a good rest of your day.